Greetings everybody and welcome to Powerful Plant Allies. My name is Jack, I am your host here on this channel and we are out here in the heart of the Sonoran Desert. So come on, let's go take a look. Let's see what cool things we can find. Alrighty, so I wanted to stop along the path right here because I wanted to show you something. Let me flip the camera around for you. As you can see right here, we have a beautiful mesquite tree, but underneath it, I'm not sure if you can see it, but right there is a young, about 50 year old saguaro cactus. Now, when we do the saguaro documentary, I'll talk more about this, but what's really cool about this is these two plants have such a beautiful symbiotic relationship. Now the young saguaros, uh, when they're young, they cannot really take the direct sunlight of the desert, so a lot of them propagate underneath nursing mesquite trees. Now eventually, when the saguaro gets big enough and the monsoon rains come in, the roots of the saguaro will suck up all of the water from the surrounding soil, and eventually it will not leave any for the nursing mesquite tree, and then the mesquite tree will eventually dry up and die. So it might sound a little bit crazy to you, but to me it's just such a beautiful example of a symbiotic relationship between two species here, coexisting with each other, and the mesquite being that parent figure for this beautiful saguaro, uh, which if it's untouched, the saguaro can live up to 200 years. Now with the saguaros, as you can see, here's another young one right here. And the saguaros don't get their first arms until they're about 75 years of age. So when you look around, you could even see this one right over here in the distance. Uh, still does not have any arms, so it's just under 75 years of age. So if you want to somehow calculate the age of the saguaros, just look to see if they have arms. And you can see there's plenty of them around here that have the arms. Miraculous. So beautiful. Now, the desert will always give you that friendly reminder to drink water and to keep your body hydrated. First thing I learned when I moved here was the importance of keeping yourself hydrated. Even simply just walking through a parking lot to your car can completely deplete you of water. Uh, so when you come out here hiking, it's very important to carry, um, at least if you're walking, at least a half a gallon of water. But if you want to walk further than a couple miles, uh, you can carry around a gallon. I have one of those gallon water backpacks, the hiking backpacks, which really helps me. But coming out here in the desert, uh, the earth will give you that beautiful, kind, but uh, serious reminder of taking care of your body. Because you'd be surprised at how many people live here and come out here in the desert for a hike and don't bring any water. And unfortunately, some people out here will suffer a heat stroke. Uh, so it's very important if you live out here or if you come out here to visit, always carry some water. I know that seems like such a, uh, a well-known fact to bring water into a desert, but uh, as I said, some people are not really aware of the true power of the desert and how it can totally deplete you and dehydrate you of any water. So just a friendly reminder, absolutely. Come on, let's keep going. Alrighty, so a few minutes ago we were talking about the saguaro and the mesquite trees living together. And what do you know, about a mile up the path, here is a prime and perfect example of it. Now look at this beautiful patch of saguaro. I don't think I've ever seen as many growing so close to each other. But you can see, because there are so many young ones growing over here, eventually, and we've had a pretty good monsoon season this year, but uh, this mesquite tree looks like it has a... Uh, 
passed over a couple years ago and you could see it's all dried out uh, no life left in it but you could see the saguaro right here especially these young ones right here that are growing right up next to it uh, eventually just drew up so much water that the mesquite tree could no longer survive beautiful example of nature of working together and just the evolution of nature you know now the saguaros don't necessarily need to be under a mesquite tree to survive they can be under young shrubs uh, bushes saguaros can also be found under nursing palo verde trees as well a lot of them will grow together with the mesquite tree and yeah, look at this, perfect example. Sometimes when you ask the universe for an example, the universe always delivers. Amazing. Here's another plant that we're going to be talking about during the Sonoran Desert season. And this is the Acatillo. Now the Acatillo is known here as uh, Flame on the Mountain. It's uh, one of the common words I've, I've heard it called. And the reason they call it that is because when these plants flower, their flowers are beautiful orange, bright orange color. And I'm going to insert uh, a couple of the videos I shot uh, a couple months ago of the Acatillo flowers over this video. But uh, these plants will drop their leaves so fast if they don't get enough water. And then eventually, when they do get enough water, they will sprout up. And look at this beautiful green bushiness of it. <laughs> now, if you look real close at the Acatillo, let me see if I can focus in on it. But if you see right, right here, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, right there's a perfect example of it, okay? Right there. It is covered with all of these little thorns up and down the stalks. But just look at how beautiful the leaves are. Magical. So we're going to be talking about the medicinal uses of Acatillo. We're going to go super in-depth into it. Uh, but I just wanted to show it to you guys so you guys know what it looks like. And a little brief introduction to what's coming. So, super cool. Now, the desert is a beautiful place. However, there are some dangers and some hazards that you have to be aware of. Come take a look at this sign right here. mountain lion warning. So we have beautiful animals out here, beautiful plants, just a vast and life-filled ecosystem. Uh, but there are some animals out here that you need to be aware of. We have black bears down here in the desert, we have mountain lions, uh, we have rattlesnakes. And I'm not telling you this to, to instill fear, but it's very important when you're hiking to always be aware of your surroundings and uh, to always be cautious, especially if you're off bushwhacking uh, and you're off the beaten path. Uh, you can get some snake guards, some snake boots, but just always be aware. It's a friendly reminder. Uh, as with any hiking anywhere, just be aware of your surroundings, uh, but don't carry fear with you, you know? The earth loves you, the earth wants you to come out here and experience her, uh, but just be aware. Take a look at this beautiful treat that the earth gifted us today. Wow. The water is flowing. Life is thriving out here. What a beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. There's something about being in the presence of a beautiful flowing stream that I have always found to be so healing. Uh, out here where there's a lot of grounded energy with the rock formations and the strong cacti, that the beautiful flow of water when you're in the presence of it in the middle of all the dryness of the desert, uh, it just heightens the experience. Because sitting here, being by the stream, meditating with the flowing water, brushing past your feet, 
uh, there's nothing like it for me at least and uh, I cherish each and every second of being here out here by this stream and I just love it I feel at home out here <laughs> it's amazing if only the whole world could come out here and enjoy what nature has to offer, we'd have a totally different planet. So, get out into your natural world, go sit by a stream, stick your feet in it, get that good grounding medicine that the Earth is giving us, all those beautiful negative ions, and just absorb it all into your being and uh, you'll be okay. I want you to take a look at how big a saguaro is. To scale with me, this about 30 foot saguaro. See how it looks when I'm standing next to it. Take a look. Ginormous. So I am standing next to a really fun plant ally, one that pretty much every Tucsonian and people that live in the Sonoran Desert know about, and that is creosote, also known as chaparral. Now, if you've ever been in the Sonoran Desert after it rains, you know you're blessed with that beautiful, beautiful fragrant aroma, a little bit astringent, mixed with the petrichor of the earth, the beautiful smell of the earth after it rains. If you even just walk outside after it rains, you're like, I know that smell. I know that smell. It's the creosote. Because when the water from the rain hits the leaves of the creosote bush, it emits all of its volatile oils into the air, uh, and it just blesses us with a beautiful fragrance. And it's also a very powerful medicine, so we're going to be talking about that during the Sonoran Desert series as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But I'm happy to introduce you to Chaparral, aka Creosote. It is quite magical out here. Out here under this beautiful mesquite tree, with the beautiful stream running behind me. The sound of nothing. The sound of just pure nature. Surrounded here by beautiful mesquite pods, food, medicine. Uh, for those who think that the desert is such a desolate wasteland, uh, I'd like to show you otherwise because it has changed my life in ways that I cannot even describe. And when you come out into nature and you're able to identify plants uh, for food or for medicine, as long as you're doing it sustainably, there's nothing more empowering. That is your birth given right as a being of Mother Earth to go out into the natural world and connect with her and uh, to utilize what she has to offer. Sustainable harvesting is something that I have always talked about in all of my videos. Uh, there are some plants that are endangered, there are some plants that are protected, um, and there are also some plants that are invasive. But plant communication, plant connection is so important when you're working with the earth. So many people go out into the natural world and uh, unconsciously harvest and pull up plants and, and don't interact with the environment. Uh, so I hope at least one thing that you take away from this upcoming Sonoran Desert series is uh, the importance of sustainable harvesting and the importance of having a connection with our mother. Uh, because she is here to help us, she's here to heal us, she wants us to communicate with her. Our ancestors communicated with her, uh, so I think right now on this earth it's very important that we rekindle that relationship with her. We are the earth, 
we are everything on this earth. We are in nature. So to go out and to interact with the earth, you're interacting with a deep ancient part of yourself. So go out into the natural world. I encourage you, get a field guide. Uh, look through other videos of plant identification. Go out with an open heart, because if you go at it with an open heart and an open mind, you'd be surprised at what you learn. So I'm super excited that you're joining me for this eight-part journey through the Sonoran Desert. We've got other things. We've got vlog videos coming up, adventure videos. Uh, we're going to start interviewing herbalists and, and medicine men and women from around the world to talk about their experiences. And I'm just so grateful that I can be out here and I can share this with you from the comfort of your home or whatever viewing screen that you use. So God bless. Thank you so much for joining me and take care of yourself. In La Cache, peace.